All right, you guys, we are welcoming to On Point Podcast, Sab. She is here and we are going to sit down and have a long conversation. We just talked for an hour prior and I feel like we're going to talk for hours now. Yeah. So there's a lot to say. There's so much to say. (laughs) There's too much to say. Um, Me and Sab met through, what would you say, like, I think we met in New York yeah. Fashion Week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I obviously knew of you online, mm-hmm. and we kind of became like mutuals yeah. online, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't we don't hang out enough. No. And I want to get to know her better today. I want you guys to get to know her better today. And I feel like we just have a lot of topics. This is a safe space. Mm-hmm. Girl talk. We also have a lot in common. Yeah. yeah. I can already tell, too. Like, every time I've hung out with you, I know... And I'm very particular with energies. Like I can tell when I'm with you that like you're pure. You're not ever going to cross me. You're like a true, a true girl. That's great. Yeah. That's so important. It's so important. Like energies never, ever lie. No, they don't. Yeah. And I want to know more about you. So I want to know about your upbringing because today I was like, okay, well, I'm going to be like a true podcast queen and I'm going to like do my research. So I was like looking, I was like actually like stalker, like Joe, like from you vibes, like where you're from. You were born in Mexico City. Yes. Yes. Okay. Grew up in Florida. Yes. Okay. Oh my God, this is so cool. (laughs) And then you wore like a pink hair tie in high school. No, I'm kidding. Yes, (laughs) exactly. And I know your whole life. (laughs) No, I don't. But you want to talk more about that? Born in Mexico City Mm -hmm. till when? Um, I think I was like five. Five. Yeah. So I, I grew up in the U.S. Okay. Grew up in Florida. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I grew up in Texas. No way. Yeah. Where in Texas? San Antonio. No way. Mm-hmm. I was just in San Antonio. I loved it. You did? Yeah. I loved growing up there. Okay. It was just like such a, uh, like, because then I moved to Miami and I feel like Texas was just more like smaller, I guess. It was like a community, literally. Mm-hmm. And Miami's Miami. Yeah. It's like, like LA. like Insane. New York. Everyone's just like literally so busy and so yeah like they're moving all the time all the time that's honestly why i don't really like new york yeah i know it's a little bit too much for me in new york it's like i want to like go outside and smell nature and like not hear from anybody yeah i need you can't do that in new york what's your sign i'm a pisces oh yeah wait we already knew this i'm a capricorn i'm an earth sign pisces is water Mm -hmm. okay very emotional yeah do you know your rising um my rising is a Leo. Me too. Rising wow. Leo, and then my moon is a Libra. No way. Me yeah. too. That's crazy. What? Okay, that makes so much sense for really? us. You know, I thought for the longest time that my rising was a Capricorn. Mm-hmm. I'm and a Capricorn. I found out later that it was actually a Leo, and Leo. I like had an identity crisis. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, my but whole I, life has been a lie. I always felt that too when I like figured out all this rising stuff because Capricorns are very reserved to themselves success business schedule and Mm -hmm. like I'm so when I first meet people I can talk to anybody like sit me down in a room and I'll find a way to like like morph into whatever they are to like make them feel comfortable and I feel like you're the same kind of or maybe not at least when I first met you you were super open really yeah was I drunk? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We both were. <laughs> yeah, that's probably yeah. why. A Leo rising is like basically being drunk all the time, I feel like, for me. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Unless I'm anxious, then it's over I'm with. usually anxious. I'm so always it's like, anxious. I don't know. Some It depends on the person, really. Like, yeah. if I meet someone and I get, like, a good vibe, then I can talk to you right. for a long time. If I get a weird vibe, I'm like... Yeah, it's done. Like, no. No, I, I feel the same way. I'm like, I, I already checked out of that. Yeah. Like, it's not worth my time. I'm also very, like, I don't know, you kind of have to, like, pick at me a little bit to, like, get me to, like, yeah actually talk about things. Yeah, I know. I'm the same way. Like, I can, you can, like, immediately have my vibe, but you don't know that I actually am not outgoing at all, and I actually mm-hmm. stay home all day and crochet and watch Grey's Anatomy. Like, I don't actually do anything. I've never crocheted, but my sister loves it. Oh, I'm going to teach you. Yeah, it looks so fun, because I'm very much, like, I love to, I love arts and crafts. Yeah. Like, I love it. Me too. I honestly think it's, like, the Pisces in me, but I love... Legos. Me too. Me too. I have a Lego problem. No, me too. A literal like wall, like a yeah. Lego collection. It's ridiculous. But do you like when people help you or no? No. Me neither. That's how I am with my puzzles. Don't touch my if wall. someone comes into my house and touches my puzzle, I'm like, are you kidding me? What's the whole point? I like, had a puzzle problem. Yeah. I had a puzzle problem yeah. for a little. It went from so I had like 
coloring books after Cooper passed. Oh my god. It yeah. was like my you walked into my apartment and it literally looked like an asylum. Like it was oh my like, god. there was like coloring books everywhere. There's like pages ripped out of my coloring books that I would just tape on the wall. <laughs> yeah. So well, like, that's a better outlet than most people do. Yeah, so I'd just, say. I was just coloring and yeah. I I was watching like Gravity Falls. Oh my like god, months. Gravity Falls. Yeah. It was awesome. Can we have I w- Okay, I want to start a night once a week where girls like all gather together at arts and craft night and like it's just like a girl club. I would love that. Like a club. That's literally what I do every night. But me too. It's all day. Like, <laughs> like, I haven't done a puzzle in a while, honestly. Oliver like traumatized me from puzzles. No. Because I built this. I got a Rick and Morty puzzle and it was like so big and awesome and I was so excited about it. And I'm like spending the entire day building this puzzle. All day. All day. Yeah. And Oliver comes over and he's like trying to like help mm-hmm. and he had a diet coke in his hand and it spilled all over the puzzle no and it all just like crumbled up no and like fell apart and oh. i walk into the bathroom and i just cry there's nothing worse i just cried. all that hard work <laughs> and oh. i said that i said that once on i think i said it on my youtube video and like all his comments were like you puzzle ruiner yeah <laughs> the drama <laughs> he was like what the fuck like, that's crazy it was hilarious yeah we need to start a night like that for sure um but going back to growing up, <laughs> yeah, I, I like, swear, we're going to go into so Rick many tangents. Puzzles, like, yeah, how do we get here? I don't know how we got here. Um, so you, how long did you grow up in Texas for? Um, until I was like 15. 15. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, then Miami. Miami. And then when did you move out to LA? I was freshly 18. Wow. Yeah. And did you move out to LA because like when did when did it all like spark for you when did like social media become I was 17 okay it was like halfway through my senior year and I was I was I just had a lot of time on my hands because I had done like this thing called um like early admission I think it was called Mm -hmm. I don't really know but I basically had all my credits done from high school so I did like a full year of college credits wow my senior year so i wasn't actually going to high school the only times i would like step into my high school was for my track meets okay and, like track practice but during the day i would just like do my college courses okay and that was like two courses a day literally so yeah. i didn't i had so much time on my hands and tiktok started mm-hmm. and i was like hmm okay and I, it was a joke at first i posted a video with my little brother and it like blew up Okay. Because everyone thought my little brother was so cute because he's adorable. <laughs> oh. So everyone just loved him. And then I saw someone do a POV. <laughs> yes, the POVs. The POVs. We love the POVs. I saw someone do it. And then I, I guess I was like one of the first people to start doing it because I was like, that's fun. And yeah. I never saw anyone in high school anyway. So I was like, I'm not embarrassed. Yeah, like, whatever. No, like, whatever. I'm not yeah. going to get made fun of. I still got made fun of at like track meets. Of and shit, course. But of course. I didn't really care. So I did a POV, I got like a million likes and I was like, and at the time, like that's a lot of fucking likes. That's a lot, yeah. Like TikTok had just started. So I was like, oh my God, like that's a lot of likes. That's crazy. And then I kept doing them and it just kept going and going and going. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting like emails like, oh, do you need a manager? And I was like, for what? (laughs) Like (laughs) manager for what? Like I was so confused, but I was like, yeah, sure. Like whatever that means. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then I got my first paycheck, which was like seventy dollars. But I was like, "Holy shit!" Like I worked a nine to five at Starbucks. No way! Yeah, for a year I worked at Starbucks. That's so cool. So I was like, "Wait, you're paying me to post on TikTok? Like that's really crazy." Yeah. And so I kept doing it. Like the more followers I got, like the bigger the paychecks came in. And then eventually I was like, "You know what? Like I want to act." And I was going to go to college for um, theater. And I just couldn't do it all at the same time. No. And I didn't want to. Yeah. Like, school just wasn't... I was always very big on school, actually. But when I started doing TikTok, I was like, Ugh, Yeah. I don't know. It was so scary, but I just wanted to, like, give it a chance. Yeah. So my parents gave me a year. Like, okay. a gap year. Okay. And then when I moved out here, like, shit just blew up. It blew up. So... When did you... You moved out here, like, because your management was, like... Yeah. Was it... T- straight into the content house actually or? yeah so i moved out here a lot of people don't know this charlie jordan actually got me out here no way yes. oh my god because i was talking to her and we were mutuals and she was talking to me about clubhouse and she like connected me with somebody in clubhouse because i knew um i knew all the girls already but i didn't really know them right i like had met maddie i was really good friends with dev okay and 
she was really the only person that I knew and Anna, but Anna wasn't in the house. She had her own house at the time. Okay. So I didn't really think about not a content house. Like it wasn't like, yeah, you know, I, I didn't think about it, but Charlie connected me with Clubhouse and I ended up flying out here to like meet with Clubhouse and they wanted me. So I like moved out here. Literally didn't even, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. I moved out here with a suitcase and was like, okay. And I was in Clubhouse, but then they like thought I would be a better fit for not a content house. Okay. So they moved me over. Oh my gosh. And that's where it all kind of started. The content house thing is such like a mystery to me. Like how does that even work? So you live in a house with a bunch mm-hmm. of girls mm-hmm. and like what's the benefit of it, of it just because you all make content Yeah, so together. basically the benefits were like content um, and free rent. Oh, right. Because like the companies would pay for yeah. or, like, okay. We didn't pay for anything. As for like sponsorships, how did, like, did it, was it extra because of... You lived in it. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna like tell you exactly how it works. Oh my god! A lot of people don't actually know. No, I know. I I feel like everyone's like curious. What is this? What the fuck is this? Okay, Um, break it down. So I think it was like how many of us were in that house? I don't actually know. When it first started, there was so many of us. Well, obviously they had the house for a while, but when we all like, like everyone came in, there was two different houses because there was so many of us. I lived in a house, and it was a big house. It was a huge house, and it was beautiful, and it was in Beverly Hills. And it's like, I can't afford that. Yeah. So none of us could. Um, basically, we each had deliverables. That's what okay. they were called. Yes. And they would, like, split it up. So there was, like, maybe three deliverables a week. And, like, Sabrina gets it one day, or, like, Deb gets it the next day. Oh. And they would, like, alternate. And the deliverables were, like, sound promos. Okay. And, like, brand deals that would come in for the house. And we would do them, but we wouldn't get paid for them. What? Then it's just to live? The The payment would go for rent. Oh. So, like, we were paying rent, but, like, we weren't. But not, yeah. Not directly. It was just, like, the everything would go to the house, and then they would pay rent. With okay, it. I get that. But I it still was don't also, really understand it, to be honest. Yeah. It was beneficial because, like, you guys were like came up together as a group yeah. and, like benefited off each other and i definitely yeah we all benefited from it i just don't i still don't really understand how they did (laughs) yeah it's just (laughs) like a mystery but i understand like yeah it was such a thing at the time it was such a thing and And at the time like it's like you know tiktokers crazy it was just insane i was like this is such a crazy concept like i was literally living in a huge amazing house in beverly hills and i just like had to do deliverables each week and to like move out from I mean, I, you're I in Miami, actually, but, but there it was like a lot of um, there was a lot of, not even drama, but more like, you put a bunch of teenage girls in a house together. Like, oh, I can't imagine. We were all like sisters. Imagine. Like I fight with my sister all the time. Yeah, you know, it's like we were all just and we were under a lot of stress and because there was also like this like underlying thing all the time where it was like if you don't do exactly like what you're supposed to do like you're right. out and like figure it out oh my gosh so that was like really stressful all the time how would you even relate that to like it's like school but like yeah. not <laughs> no it was it's, it's like weird. a sorority it is like a sorority, <laughs> like a sorority. literally a sorority literally we that's were all, crazy. like sisters so we were all just under a lot of stress yeah and like it was just all new to us. We were all so young. Mm-hmm. We were like 18. Some of us were 17. Some of us that's were 16. Insane. Like That's insane. We just all didn't know what was going on. Yeah. But, and it all just kept happening so fast. Mm-hmm. Like, we were all growing so fast. Yeah. And we did not know how to handle it. I bet. Like, I bet. Like, we were all just like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. And you all just, like, gained this fame and popularity together. Mm-hmm. That's insane. It was pretty crazy. It's a crazy bond, too. It was. Yeah. Like, it's like so much history there. There is so much history. And then, like, we lived in multiple houses together. Like, we all moved out and moved into, like, three different houses. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it was crazy. And how did that kind of end? Um, You know, I think it honestly just ran its course. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't anything, like, crazy happened. Like, yeah. literally, we moved into the third house. How many houses did we live in? <laughs> <laughs> we lived into the third one. Like, our management, like, moved us out of the old one and, like, put us in this new house. And it was just, like, too much at that mm-hmm. point, you know? Yeah. There was, like, we all had pets. Oh, my gosh. So you, that you was one of, pets? like, the biggest problems that we all had. Cause, I like, bet. It just, like, there, there was so, we were, there were, the dogs would fight, and then, like, they would go to the bathroom. And it's just, like, we all just didn't, it was too much. Yeah. That seems like a lot of stress. After, like, we all wanted, you know, we all didn't even want to, like, do it anymore. I think we all just wanted our own space. Yeah. And... 
we kind of outgrew it and like it it literally just ran its course yeah so slowly we were all just kind of like yeah i don't think like there's no point anymore no you know no one and everyone was over it yeah i bet all of like the people that followed us were just kind of like yeah it was like a thing of the time we like we tried it we did it like when we changed the house from like not a content house to just a house i feel Mm -hmm. like it was just kind of like we should have just stopped it there right because it ran its course yeah and everyone was just kind of like what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing? A hundred percent. And then you all like became your own individuals. In yeah. And it was doing. amazing. Right. Like, for every single person involved, like it was so good for them. Yeah. No, Because we bet. needed space and we just like, it made like distance makes the heart grow fonder. So like 100%. Every, it was like so much nicer to like yeah. just like see each other and not like have to like wake up every morning and be like, oh, what deliverable do we have to do today? Yeah. Like you, you and you. It's like just so much in, pressure. You know? It was just like. It made things a lot easier yeah. for us. Good. But it was weird. Content houses are very weird. Yeah. I feel like someone should make a documentary about it. No, them. I honestly think that that would be so fascinating. Yeah. I think like, it's there's a, a lot. It's an anomaly to so it. many people. It's like such a mystery. It like, is. What's, it's weird. It's a it? literal like social media sorority. Yeah. Yeah. It's so weird. No, it's insane. So obviously those people became like your automatic friends yeah. out here. And how was that like? It was was like, it competitive energy? No, never, okay. actually. Like, you would assume so, but yeah. it was never competitive at all. That's good. Like, we were honestly just all, like, there was a point in time where we were all struggling so much, like, mentally, that it was just more of, like, a making sure everyone's okay. Yeah. I don't good. really know what it was, honestly. Like, it was just, like, the en- energy and the environment of, like, where we were, like, was just really not good for us anymore. Yeah. And that's that. I mean, that happens. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, like your experience coming to L.A., how has that been with making friends and girls out here? Um, Because I talk about it all the time and I have such a hard time connecting and trusting people. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's just been like, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a me problem as well because I have a really hard time trusting people. Yeah. Like a really, really hard time because I've just been very um over trusting and it's always kind of bit me in the ass yep that's me so, i'm an oversharer and i it yes. bites me in the ass every I'm time i'm such an oversharer too with the wrong people but i feel like you found some people like yeah oliver yeah yeah so like, like i think oliver is just so um he's so genuine mm-hmm. like he really is and he just really cares about my well-being yeah and like it shows you and know? that's like the most important like quality. when i was like at my lowest point like mm-hmm. he was like literally he was there right there and that's how you know yeah that's how you know it was i don't know i think maybe now i've i like take things with a grain of salt now and anything that happens i'm just kind of like okay you know i feel like my life the way i describe it is like my life is a big like book it is <laughs> it's a book it is and anytime something bad happens to me i'm just like okay this is a chapter and it's it's just adding to the plot yep and it's okay. And I know. Like, next chapter is starting. I look at that a lot too in life. It's like you have to kind of take yourself out and look at like your character in this story. Yeah. Literally like a game. It's like a video game. It and is. you're going through all these obstacles and it's making you stronger and stronger. You keep eating the mushrooms and you're like, yeah. it's like, that's how it is. And if you look at it that way, it can be so much healthier. Not so. It is it. so much healthier. Like, yeah. Because I think before, um, like this past year, I've matured a lot. Like I've literally become a completely different person. Yeah. But before, I took everything so personally, mm-hmm. and I was just, like, I would get so angry and upset, and I'd just be like, boo-hoo, like, right. poor Sabrina, you know? Yeah. But now it's just kind of, like, everybody that I meet, every situation that I'm put in is, like, I'm supposed to learn something from it. You 100%. Know? And it's adding to everything that you learn. Yeah. Everything. That's why, like, even, like, friendships that I've had and, like, relationships that I've been in, like, I have learned something amazing from each of them. Yeah. So, Bad or good. Yeah. Bad or good. Like, I don't really see them as a negative thing. Yeah. And we're so young, too. Yeah. I just feel, I feel so old. I feel like I have know too much already. Me, I'm too. Like, I feel like I've aged, like, 10 years in the past year. We've obviously had conversations about the fact that you went through something, probably the worst possible, <laughs> most traumatic thing ever. Yeah. Which you un- lost your boyfriend. Yeah. To addiction. Yes. And overdose. And, I mean, I know we've talked about it so many times that... It's just something that I don't I mean, no one's going to understand really your experience. But if you want to talk about it, just because I 
I go to Al-Anon meetings with my mom. She goes every Sunday because we have family members and I've loved ones. So many people in my life that struggle with addiction and I know how mentally challenging it can be to be around and to blame yourself and to like, you know, how, how has that experience been for you? You know, it's, I've never actually talked about this online. Really? We don't have to if you don't want to. No, it's actually like, I feel like I'm at a place now where I can talk about it. Um, I talked about it like briefly in a YouTube video, but it was, I I literally in the YouTube video was like, I don't want to talk about Cooper. I want to just like talk about grief. Yeah. Because I just, I think I had a really hard time talking about it because I gained half a million followers after he died. That's insane. I gained half a million followers. And like that came with guilt for you. And I was like, I actually was so angry about it because that happened in less than 48 hours. Half a million? Wow. And I was like, it was so, I was so angry. Like I was so angry because I was Mm -hmm. like, people, I knew that the reason people were following me was just like, it was like entertaining. Yeah. And I hated that. I know. So I was like sitting in my room, like deleting followers for and like hours. Really? Yeah. I was, I kind of lost it a little it's bit. It's so, like something that's so serious to you and like to the I internet, just, it's a story, it's a story and, and like drama kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that I, wasn't, it's too, too serious. I think like now I'm okay. Like I've come to terms with it and I also like, I see it as a blessing because I do get to like talk about him and like share that mm-hmm. with half a million more people. So yeah. it's like, it is a blessing. But at the time I was like what the fuck yeah like, it's just not something fuck? that like i mean if people go through that in life but to add social media to it it's like a whole nother it was obstacle it, it was like i actually this is the first time i ever experienced loss and grief yeah so i don't know what it's like to go through like grieving someone off of social media yeah i can't even imagine it no you know it's like it was so weird yeah and i had to like Everything I posted after, I had to, like, think about... I I don't know. I just didn't want to seem disrespectful. Right. I knew Cooper in a way that, like, really nobody else did. Yeah. So it was, like, when I would post something and, like, people would be, like, oh, like, what... You know, if I posted something smiling, Mm -hmm. I would get shit on. Yeah. If I posted an audio that wasn't sad, I would get shit on. So hard. And it was, like... But then at the same time, it's like, I don't want to keep posting these like sad videos because then like it doesn't seem authentic if I'm just doing it because people want me to. Yeah. Cooper passing away taught me like how important like human relationships are. Mm -hmm. And it's like that made me just have a different viewpoint on everything. Yeah. Everything like knowing that I treated Cooper like with so much love. Yeah. Like that's that's going to be with me forever. And his legacy and everything. I know that you guys have started is it end overdose it's yeah. called okay and that's um, like a support so, it's, so basically it's his foundation's coops advice okay and that's where like you can get his um clothing okay and his discord yes and overdose i actually just got a training from them oh amazing on, like how to like distribute narcan wow yeah it was it was really cool oh my god that's major i want to yeah. do that you should. So I can I can go through them and do yes. that. Yes. Okay. They like trained me on how to do it. They gave me Narcan. They wow. like taught me, which is great. And yeah. if you don't know, Narcan is, it's a drug. But it's when people but are it's overdosing. When people are overdosing, you yeah. can administer this drug and it stops the overdose. So okay. I got that training. Um, basically, Cooper had reached out to End Overdose like I think a week before he passed, because mm. he wanted to do something with them. I remember seeing that. And after he passed away, like. And overdose and Coop's advice. Just like they work really yeah. closely now. Good. I know it's just so like it's like I don't even know where to start with that because I'll never understand a grief and I've never had a loss like that. But I do know having people in your life with addiction and I know there's probably been people that come to you and be like, well, why didn't you help him and stop him? And like that narrative is so damaging because it's once they're an adult, there's absolutely nothing you can right. do. And it, it doesn't matter if it's as extreme as addiction or literally a girl in a toxic relationship or addiction to a coffee. It's like if you don't make the decision within yourself, you know, yeah. there's nothing that anybody else can do. And it's so that's the number one thing you learn in Al-Anon, which is like basically a meeting. You know, there's AA for alcoholics but then there's Al-Anon which is family and friends of people that struggle with addiction and in those meetings it's like there's literally you have to know that there's nothing 
you know, and how, how have you dealt with that? Like, do you, do you feel that same type of thing? Or? Yeah. I think after he passed away, it was really easy for people to point fingers at me Yeah, because we broke up a couple weeks before that. Yeah. Which fucking, like, it literally turned my brain into mush. I was like, I was already dealing with, like, the guilt, you know? Yeah. I was already dealing with all of it. And then, like, to see it all online was, like, I don't know. It was just so, it was so mind fucking. Like, I couldn't I process it. Imagine. Because also, like, nobody knew why we broke up. Nobody knew, like, what happened there. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, all I ever really wanted to do, like, all I cared about was, like, his health, you yeah. know? But I wasn't good for him anymore. Yeah. He needed to, like... He needed to do it on his own. Yeah, but it's I was, not about love. No, it's nothing not about, about love. love. It's a disease. Like you can't. I could. I couldn't. Like there was nothing else I could give him. No, you guys had something so special, so special. You know. Yeah, he was just very like. I don't know. I I think I I don't think I'd ever I'm ever gonna meet somebody like mm-hmm. that again because he just the way that he loved me was like so. Like pr- protective. Like yeah. he just wanted to protect me and like. You know, you everyone knew better than to say something bad about me around Cooper. Oh, yeah. Like, they Good. knew better. Good. Because he was just, like, that, you know, I was, he just wanted to protect me. Yeah. So. And I did, too. But, again, it's, a, like, you will never understand how addiction works unless you experience it. Yeah. And it's so, it's so serious and so deep. And it comes in so many different levels. And, like, the blame that you put on yourself for just, like, what they go through and like you have to know it's just so hard and there's and then you kind of blame yourself for like why well why if they really cared about me then why wouldn't they help themselves because the, yeah. for me and like there's so many things or that go like, into why it. am i not doing it like how how can i do more like yeah am i not worth you doing this for me yeah. like it turns into so much like yeah it's crazy it's so hard it's it so hard. hard to like understand and especially when you're like romantic with someone that's yeah. dealing with addiction it's like It is so fucking hard because, you know, it's like we would have amazing, great days. And then, like, at night he would, like, struggle. And it was just – it was so difficult for me to understand. But I think I I started, like, doing my research. I went to meetings with him. I went to therapy with him. And I was like, I need to understand this because it wasn't – it wasn't as simple as, like, be happy for me, you know? Like, I make you happy. That's yeah. enough. That was never it. It's not it. Yeah. It's a literal, like, disease. It's a, It completely takes over. It, it literally, like, your brain doesn't function the way a normal person's brain no. does. You've been so strong. And, like, everything that you've been through since then. Yeah. <laughs> so much, like... I can't have one more traumatic thing happen to you. I can't. Like, I literally can't see it happen yeah, because it was... you're such a beautiful being and such a beautiful soul. And, like, I just remember, too, when you guys had broken up and I had called you because I was dealing with someone in my life that has addiction problems. Yeah. And I came to you and this was before he had passed. And I just was talking to you in the way that you talked about him, even though you guys weren't together, it was just like, I, I love him and I'm just trying to keep him alive right now. Like, every, I'm doing everything I can. You know, yeah. and that's like the most heartbreaking thing is I just at the end of the oh, day. Oh, sorry. I know. I know. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it's so deep. <laughs> and we crazy. need to transition to something. But no, it's, it's just okay. like. This is good. My I therapist know. would love this. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> She'd be like, wow, she's crying. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I didn't want to make you cry today. No, you're but, fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. But to wrap it all up, what would you tell somebody that's struggling with somebody that has addiction in um, you can't take it personally. Yeah. You have to be patient. Like, I think that's the biggest thing. You know, Cooper was like, he was like a baby. Yeah. He was like a baby. Like, yeah. he just wanted to be like, literally like held and protected. Yeah. And like supported. He wanted to feel love. That's the biggest thing that Cooper ever wanted. Like, he just wanted to be loved. Yeah. And he was like so deeply. So loved. By so many people. Yeah. And, like, he knows that. And even, like, those last couple of weeks when he was struggling, like, we all showed him so much love. And, yeah. like, that's really all you can do. You can be patient and just, just like, show them love because they're in their head. Like, they're struggling with, like, a will to live, yeah. you know. 
So literally, it's so you uh, have to like insane. Just show them like you're grateful. Show love. Yeah. Always. But also you can't, you know, blame yourself. No, you can't. Wow. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's so deep, but it's so important. And yeah. like you can just also tell now the impact that he has on the world and how many lives oh, he's going to save, you know. He would be so so happy. And you know he's you know he's seeing it all happen. I know. You know he's right there. Yeah. You know. Oh, I know. Oh, we know. <laughs> like I know. He's sitting here like laughing, laughing at things. He's laughing. He's laughing his ass off. He's, he's right like, there. Did you just cry? Yeah. Like you're so like, fucking Did you lame. see what that person did? Like he knows. <laughs> he, knows. he knows. Yeah. He definitely knows. Like he's laughing his ass off. Oh, God, you're so strong. Thank you. So strong. <laughs> and to segue, I want to talk about mental health in general because it's obviously something I talk about all the time because I'm diagnosed with anxiety, pure anxiety every day, and I'm OCD, diagnosed with OCD. So I'm on medication for that. We talk about it a lot and how that affects my everyday life. But And body image, another Oof. thing that if you want to talk about, I actually totally can. would love to talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go into body image because obviously... I'm a ballerina, struggled with it my whole entire life, every single day, body dysmorphia, hate myself. Yeah. You know, I mean, being a girl in LA, in the industry we're yeah. in, who doesn't? Honestly, who doesn't? But how have you ever struggled with like... So yeah, growing up, and I've I've been open about this online, I think everybody knows, but like, I've never actually gotten into details. Um, growing up, I struggled with bulimia. Oh, wow. Okay. And that was up until like, I moved to LA, actually. Like, wow. I moved to L.A. and then it kind of transitioned actually after Cooper passed away is when I started like struggling with anorexia. But it wasn't even um, weirdly enough. It wasn't about my body. Right. It was about control. It's control. There's two ways an eating disorder can go. It was control. Yeah. Like I didn't really have a problem. Like I wasn't trying to lose weight. Mm -hmm. I just like I felt so out of control with my life. That you needed one thing to have control about. I needed one thing. Yeah. And it was food. Yeah. And that's where, like, I I had so much comfort in it. Yeah. You know? Like, bad comfort. But I know Terrible I know exactly comfort. what you're talking about. But it was control. Like, I think when I... It kind of became, a, like, a coping mechanism for me. Like, yeah. when I would lose control of something or, like, something bad would happen to me, it's like I would turn to food. Yeah. It's like the one thing you can count on, but you can't. Yeah. You can't, but you, <laughs> yeah. like... But it, it brought me so much comfort. Right. But it was so bad for so me. So bad. Like, I know. Oh I know exactly God. what you're talking about. It was awful. Just textbook eating disorder. Yeah. That's crazy. When did bulimia, when did that start for you? Um, I was like 16. And was that body based? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I started running track when I was literally like, yeah, I think around when I started doing sports. Um, you know, I don't really know where it came from. Mm hmm. It was just all body based. I was very yeah. like I have a problem. I had a problem comparing myself to other people. Yeah, I'm a lot better at it now. Yeah, like now I'm just kind of like I don't care. I don't really know what changed. I mean, I think when you go through something like you did, or just as traumatic as you did, everything that's so mental kind of goes away. It's like, well, you know. Yeah. And we were just talking about this. It's like genuinely, if I got a call from the doctor today and was diagnosed with cancer, I would live my life completely different. Completely different. But why? Why shouldn't I live every day like that? You I would die what? tomorrow. I think that after, like, I was I was struggling a lot with it after mm -hmm. Cooper passed away for, like, I don't know, like, seven months. And then when I got out of the psych ward... <laughs> oh, my gosh. When I got out of the psych ward, I, it like, everything just wasn't as serious to me anymore, yeah. you know? I was just yeah. kind of like, what am I doing? Yeah. Like, we were all placed on this. If this is our only chance, and we are so in our heads, we should be out in nature. We should be, like, you know, doing these crafts and, and, yeah. and connecting with people genuinely, you know? It's just, like, when actually, like, going to the... Going to, it's so funny. Sorry. I, I shouldn't laugh when I say it, but... <laughs> it's like, God. Going to the mental hospital, it completely changed my view on everything everything yeah again yeah <laughs> like, can we like, again i was just saying that 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 has to be the last shebang for you yeah it was that was like, the explosion and now you're blossomed yeah i'm doing so like it it was such a blessing in disguise like yeah it was really really messed up in the yeah. moment yeah but when i got out i was like okay first of all 
what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Second of all, like everything, I started looking at everything as like things were happening for me, not to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it completely changed my view on everything. That's amazing. Like, that's incredible. Like I started waking up early again. I started doing things. I started working. Yeah. Because I took like a really long break from work. I wasn't doing anything. As you you should. I I went back to acting class. I'm starting my podcast. I just started doing so many things for myself because I was just like, yeah, that was rock bottom. Yeah. I mean, yeah, (laughs) I could only go up. So I was like, okay, like this is, you know, I had to put Mm -hmm. my big girl pants on and do it. And it takes that and it at any level, you know, and that's what they also say for addicts. It's like, you can't help them until they hit their rock bottom yeah. and every b- person has their rock bottom and I had my you had your rock bottom and that like I think the, in those moments your life is you you put everything into perspective and it's like okay exactly I need to actually cherish this life if, if it was so fragile to me at that point it's like no it, it, this is permanent yeah how do I make this the best it can be exactly you know it was like I, I stopped looking at I literally like put myself in like the third person and I was just like okay, what the fuck am I doing wrong Yeah, that ended me here? Yeah. And then I just changed it. I literally was just like, I can't do this anymore. No. Like, I don't want to, I don't want, I found a lot of comfort in being sad. Yeah. Like, I, it was comforting. It's comforting. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. You want to pity yourself. You want to, yeah. because it's like, you don't have to do the work anymore. You yeah. Know? And it's like, whenever I'd be happy, I'd be like, fuck, what's going to happen? Like, yeah. what's going to, it's taking oh, time. God. I was like, what's going, what's going to happen? Right. But I didn't want it. Like, it's just, it seemed all stupid to me yeah. in that moment i was like why am i sad yeah you know why am i letting myself feel like this or making myself feel like this yeah because i feel like i was very self-sabotaging yeah like i just everything was everything looked so little to me in that moment right and i was like none of this is none gonna of, matter nothing matters <laughs> none of it matters gosh you're so strong like genuinely you and you inspire so many girls and you know that and you inspire me like even just <laughs> me and I don't know you that well, but every time I've been with you, like, I can just see it. And I was, before that all happened, right after that all happened in New York, like, I could just see your strength and what, you know, it's, it's just so inspiring for so many people. And Thank you. Everything you've been through is just... Gnarly. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> it's gnarly, but it's like, it's going to turn you into this superhuman that is going to change the world in so many ways. Genuinely, I believe that. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy you came on the podcast. I'm happy to be here. This was crazy. I actually yeah. haven't spoken about any of this before. Okay. Well, thank you for opening up on here. Like, genuinely, I hope you guys listen to everything that Sab said today because you inspire me. Genuinely, you inspire me so much. Thank and you. I think I get so scared that things are doomed forever when things happen to me. It's like, oh my God, it's forever. But like you're, you can yeah. show that you can come out of things stronger. Every single thing that you've gone through, you've learned, and it's turning you into this beautiful person that is appreciating life. You know, it's incredible. Thank you. Yay! It really <laughs> is like, it's all temporary. Yeah. All of it. Everything. Everything is temporary. Yeah. And unless you accept the fact that things can start going good for you, they're not going to start going good for you. Yeah. Like yeah. If you wow. like or picking apart all the bad in your life you're only gonna see bad i think that's what i need to learn right now yeah i think i'm in a place where i i pity myself and i want to feel bad and i need to find a way to almost fake it till i make it yeah literally fake it till you make it yeah because you will it you know yeah you gotta manifest that shit i don't want to be comfort like comfort find comfort in the doom and yeah and like the identity of of being an anxious ocd person like i don't want that anymore yeah i want to step out of it i did that for so long i mean you like (laughs) i give grace to you (laughs) genuinely give grace to you for everything you've been through that you're able to you know sit here and talk about it it's gonna inspire so many people when is this podcast you are doing coming out so we're filming the first episode this week okay and then i'm hoping it comes out next week if not the week after i'm so excited so i'm excited you and oliver yes we love oliver yes he like balances me out because i'm like the one that's like been hit by a truck a million times and he's like the comedic relief yeah you know (laughs) i love that it's gonna be so good i can't wait it's like i like say something and he's like uh yeah anyway like yeah. let's not get that dark <laughs> i just can't wait to see you star in like a movie honestly about your life <laughs> literally honestly i want to like i want to i mean i'm writing a book literally as yeah. we speak and then we'll see what i can do with it yeah you know? 
It's no, just No, that would be, so, or a Netflix series, so incredible. I honestly wow. probably could do it. No, you could. You I've got many... a lot of shit to no. write about. And you can pitch it to all these people. Like, mm-hmm. it's going to be beautiful. I'm really excited. It's, so, it's oh my just God. like I have so many lessons I've learned that I can yeah. like, share with people. You have so much, so much to do. Yeah. So much stuff coming up. I know. I'm oh, so excited. Yay. You guys have to go follow Sab on everything if you don't already. And yeah. Gosh, what else? <laughs> we'll probably, she's going to come back on, okay? Yeah. We, we could talk here for hours, honestly. Ask me questions, guys. Yeah. Should we just we'll do like a Q&A it. next time? Yeah. All right, well, well. I love you so much. I love you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having me. All right, guys. I'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.